right. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Achafu's Kung Fu Podcast with me, Darren Jones, and him over there. Uh, Clive Davis. Hello. Hello. So it's request time right, right. again. Yes. Um, so we, we put this playing, off, didn't we? We shall be playing uh, Ah Has, The Sun Always Shines on TV for the next hour. That's it. Yes. yes. Request or request Achafu's. Yeah. Was. yeah. That's it. So anyway, yes. So we were meant to do this last month, but unfortunately, uh, the great. Me. How <laughs> does it feel? See, when I'm annoying you, when you're trying to speak, it uh -huh. doesn't seem annoying at all. No, it's very annoying. Isn't it? it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how the listener feels. They're annoyed. No, they like it. No, all they, the time. Like it. No, 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 no. They, 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 they love it. They love our nonsense. That's why so many of them listen. That's right. That's right. They're droves. They are inundated. That's it. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so mm. we were meant to do this uh, recording last month, but unfortunately, Jimmy Wang Yu died. That's right. So we shunted this request show, mm. um, and did Jimmy Wang Yu instead. Very selfish of him. Diane, it was very selfish, and I'm sure um, our, our good friend, Mr. Chris Evans, who has requested this, um, not either of the two famous ones, as we mentioned before. Famous um, in his own right. He's definitely famous in his own right, because he's done us, a, done us a bit of a solid here, I think, with okay. his request, because he's, he's wanted us to do a, um, a bolo double bill. Doing us a bit of a solid does sound as if he's taking a dump on our doorstep. Yeah, that's okay. If, if we live together, like Mockham and Weiss. Well, well that's okay, because he doesn't have my address, so... Ah, which is, you know, because yeah. uh, we're a lot like Mockham and Weiss, because, you know, they weren't funny either. No, no, exactly. And I, and, and we've both got glasses, and we can both go the, do the... Yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of them didn't have glasses, though, did it? Was it, was it why, Ernie Wise? Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, Ernie Wise, the grey one. The grey one didn't have glasses. I'd say they're not funny. I mean, they weren't funny to my child and teenage. So I, I, but see, people seem to love them. I don't know if I gave them another go now. If they, uh... yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think you have to be there. I, is I think it still is it still something that turns up on telly all the time and repeats and like the best. Oh, I think yeah. I think you can find it. You could find you could find Morecambe and Wise at Christmas time on the BBC for sure. Right. And probably other times. I just don't tend to look. Mm. So. Anyway, so on to the matter at hand. Yes, Chris Evans' request. He didn't request to Chris... talk about Markham and Wise. <laughs> no, so our Chris has asked us to do Cannon to do and Bob. To do, that's the one. That's the one. Bobby Davro. <laughs> Rock on, Tommy. That's the one. Right, little and large. Now, <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's asked us to mm. do a double bill of. Um, uh, the two films that are directed by Bono. Bono Yang Se. Bono Yang mm. or Yang Se, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, some a couple of interesting little nuggets here. So, um, so it's Bolo or um, uh, Bolo the Prisoner. And there was one other title that I'm not sure I made a note of. Did you make a note of that? Um, Bolo the Brute. Or Bolo the Brute. Fists of Justice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Fist of Justice. What a lot of bollocks. But yeah, yeah. So um, that's from 1977. Even yeah. though even though other sources will tell you it's from 79. Well, I'm glad you said that, Darren, because yeah. um, I, oddly enough, uh, of the two, I was least keen to watch this because I'd seen it not that long ago for the first mm. time, um, yeah. the review for my second book. And so I looked at my review uh, before, and I had 77. And then, but 79 was everywhere else. But it, if it was in my first book, I would think, ah, that could have been an error. But in the last few years, I've become quite diligent with this stuff. And I've mm. started to learn to trust myself. For, so when I put something like, when I write something like that down, unless it's a typo, which I'm usually pretty good at avoiding, there is a reason. But this time looking around, I couldn't find why I thought it was 1977. 
but you seem to have reached the same conclusion. So I'm wondering, do you know what your source is? Uh, not off the top of my head, because um, okay. I know HKMDB, which is usually reliable, is seventy nine. Has seventy nine. Yeah. IMDB has 77, odd enough, which is usually yeah. unreliable when it comes to Hong Kong films. Yeah, but looking at looking at the um, particularly the way they've they've done the action, mm. that looks a lot. Although there's not much in it, right? You know, it's only two years. That looks much more 77 than 79. Yes, my yeah. instinct says 77 as well, just because yeah. I will get into it in more detail. It's a bit more peak, but Spencer Terence Hill. Yeah. Timing as well, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so um, yeah, if anyone actually knows for sure and wants to correct us or reaffirm, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah let us know. Um, because actually, we're going to, we're gonna, this, this is going to be something we're going to revisit right at the end of the podcast. But this is actually the first, the first uh, double bill that we've done. Um, that has made me personally um, think about actually either revising later on or revisiting different versions down the line. Oh, okay. All right. We'll come back to that at the okay. end. Okay. And what's on um, the second half of the bill, then, Darren? So the second half of the bill is uh, writing Kung Fu. Mm. Uh, A.K.A. Completely inappropriately. Yes, this is my favourite one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hot dog Kung Fu. Yeah. Hot Brilliant. dog kung fu. Oh. And when you watch the film, yeah. there is nothing hot dog about this film. There's no place for hot dogs in there. No, unless, of course, you have a thing for Candice Yu and you're going, hot dog! Like yeah. they're doing yeah. old like Tex Avery cartoons or something That's like that. That's it, yeah. Hot yeah. dang. Yeah. yeah. What a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so I'm, oh, gonna, and, I've got, I'm sorry, and AKA Chinese Samson, right? Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So I've got to thank. I must say, I hadn't, I hadn't seen either of these films before. Okay. Right. How they, how they passed me by, I don't know. Um, frankly, I've never been that interested in Bolo, but you know, he's around, and you know, I've seen lots of other things that he's right. been in, and lots of other vehicles he's been in, um, but I've never actually caught either of these two. Well, let's let's. Let's use that as an excuse then just to get, just in case anyone doesn't know, let's get the Bolo thing out. So yeah, so Bolo was a, um, a pretty much a bodybuilder, right, when he started. And mm. a, apparently ended up befriending Bruce Lee at some point. Ended up in his most famous role, which is, um, you know, Enter the Dragon. He's the big fuck off guy who... The one who isn't Bob Wall. Yeah, the one who, who crushes people underfoot, right? The meat yeah. one. And then basically yeah, yeah. did that for the rest of his career. And I suppose his other career peak is uh, blood sport, right? Which yeah. is where he did the same thing again. And yeah, to your point, a kind of a career popping up in all sorts of, especially Bruce Lee imitator films, uh, for like a few seconds or something, or a few minutes or yeah. you know, little cameos. And... Like you said, yes, I, I've never necessarily been uh, someone who's who's pursued Bolo, but on the other hand, it's always a bit of a frisson when he... Oh! Bolo! Oh, I like, oh, I like yeah. seeing him. I yeah. do like seeing him in a film. Yeah. Especially if I don't know he's in it. Yeah, it's like a nice yeah. little surprise. And Bolo, yeah. and then you wait, and then he turns yeah, up, yeah. like, yeah. Exactly, at a, yeah. At a pier, or wearing a beret, or... Whatever yeah, yeah. he does for a few minutes and then he's gone again. Yeah. But yeah, I mean for, for years and years and years, you know, particularly in the I'm thinking the early seventies, you know, Bolo was the biggest, beefiest, muscliest muscle man you could you could get in, in, in Hong Kong cinema, pretty much. You know, that's right. That's right. that's who that's who that's who your go to muscle man was. You yes. know, particularly in the in the Kung Fu genre. Uh, but ironically, um his uh, and you you'd think that you know a bodybuilder, big beefy guy like that would be into very kind of um, what's the word sort of combative martial arts if he was going to be in martial arts. But he's apparently not so much. He's into Wing Chun. Always trained mm -hmm. in Wing Chun and Tai Chi. Yes, yes, and he's That's he's um, shorter than you might expect as well. He's um, he's only about uh, 
inch taller than me, I think. He's, he's quite okay. a higher plug. He's like um, mm. 168 or something like that. He's okay, yeah. So it's not he's not unusually tall. But he, I th- I'm guessing, you know, but I suppose he was unusually broad, wasn't he? So unusually beefy. Yeah, he's almost like a square, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he always appears taller than other people somehow as well. Maybe that's that's just how they film him. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah I'm wondering if that's because um, sometimes they do th- they use certain techniques as well, don't they? Like putting putting someone on a box or putting yeah, or in a trench or yeah. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, Bolo's directorial debut. Right, um, and actually, before we before we go ahead with that. Yeah, I, I, I was I was just saying, and then we got sidetracked. I want to thank Chris for giving us this mm. because I pro we or probably collectively we probably wouldn't have done this double bill for until we were probably scraping the bottom of the barrel. And, and no, no, that's you're probably right. The only thing that might have forwarded one of them was I was surprised because um, our friend Nick uh, a few. A little while ago now, me and him did Bay Logan's 36 Chambers of Kung Fu book. Oh, yeah. On our YouTube video, Literary as Tech. And um, surprise, and, and, and that's um, split into two, right? So it's, it's, it's 18 films per. So you're thinking, well, you know, you've got that slim volume, uh, uh, slim amount of films to. to um, to use as your ambassadors for the genre, you would mm. you, you'd think it's going to be the creme de la creme, right? So I was a little bit surprised that writing Kung Fu is one of his choices. Well, certainly obscure. In the first book. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't think he's really going for obscure. He's going more for representative. Um, yeah, interesting. So, and, and, and I hadn't seen writing Kung Fu. I'd seen this first one, Ball of the Brew, mm. right? Seen, so then the fact that he'd written um, so well about it and, and it, being a bit of a fan favourite. Um, it was slightly on my radar to watch, but probably not as part of this project, if I tried. Yeah, no, and I'd heard, I'd definitely heard of it, and it was a weird ball of vehicle, but I didn't know anything else about it. You know, I would catch up, you know, I was going to catch up with it when I caught up with it. Um, but I have to say, after after having seen this version, mm. I, I now need to go and track down the other okay, version, because I be really want to see it. Because your yeah. enthusiasm is, is 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 interesting to me, so I'm wondering if we might uh, have ructions here over these. Two. This is it's it's always good when we have ructions. It is the yeah. friction is good, yes. but anyway, we're not there yet. We're no. not yet there yet. But I did before we wanted to kick off. I did want to thank Chris hmm. for giving us this little project because we wouldn't have got there without you, and I'm really happy I managed to watch both of these films, which I wouldn't have done for ages and ages and ages. Right. Yes. Thank you, Chris, and indeed, yeah. thank you anyone else who wants to. We're very happy to uh, request uh, our welcome, as long as you don't request, you know, like the entire first season of Laverne and Shirley or something like that. <laughs> um, actually, I would mind taking a look at, I haven't seen Laverne and Shirley. I used to like Laverne and Shirley when I was- I used to, I used to watch Laverne and Shirley. I used to like it when she put the glove on the bottle. Didn't they used to work in a canning factory, if I remember correctly, something like I that? Think it, like a beer factory, I thought. Oh, it might be, yeah. But the they, brewery, they, I suppose, they yeah. Had, yeah, things going along. She put the glove on the bottle. Ah, that's right, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, about I, all I remember from Laverne and Shirley. I used to, for some reason, I think, was that on quite early weekday morning? Because I seem to remember watching it before I went to school, or the majority of it before I had Yeah, I think, it was, well, it was, I think it was probably more like summer holiday programming in the morning, oh, could be. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite sure but what the appeal of Laverne and Shirley was for me. Um, yeah, same here. We, we wouldn't like it. We wouldn't like it if we watched it today. Well, am I, am I making this up? Or is either Laverne and Shirley is a spin-off from something? Or... I think it's Happy Days. Is it Happy Days is a spin-off of Laverne and Shirley? Because one, one of them, I forget her name, which is quite famous, I should remember, but one of them ended up being... One of Cagney and Lacey, right? But yes, I, I think, think so. I, I don't think Cagney and Lacey is the is the connection. You no, quite, I, no I, I think thinking, it's like there's a some happy. I want to say happy days. I was thinking Mork and Mindy, but it might be the other way around. Like Mork, mm. I don't know. Doesn't oh, really no, no, it can't be happy days because happy days are set in the sixties, isn't it? 
In the 50s. Oh, yeah. Sorry? In yeah. the 50s, even. No, early 60s. Or or 50, yeah, I think early 60s. Yeah, okay. So, Sunday, now, that we've, Monday, now that we've. Follow young. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, first one. I want to call it Bolo the Brute, actually. Yeah, why not? Yeah, Bolo the Brute. Um, it's a funny... Well, you know what? They're both funny films, these two. Funny, these are funny both as in odd. Strange. Yes, yeah, strange yeah. bits yeah. of cinema, these are. Both of them. Um, so, quite a cast of characters mm. in, in, in Bolo, Bolo the Brute. Um, uh, obviously, Bolo. Um, Jason Pai Piao, who we love. Um, Milan, it's got all of the cross-eyed people <laughs> in all say, of Hong Kong cinema. It's got the holy trinity it has. of uh, Adi Sung, Adi Sung, Ooh, Adi yeah. Sung, Yu yeah. Wan, and yeah. Tosu... Uh, Tosu Ming. Tosu Ming, yeah. Uh, well, and Chin Yitzhan, he can do cross-eyed as well. Yes, but I don't think of him as canon cross-eyed. He's not a canon cross-eyed, he's, he's a little bit of an offshoot, but yeah. he should still be included in that. You got Eric Tang in drag. Um, yeah, that's a worth the price of admission alone. Who should never be in drag. Oh, that's loads of fun. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kong Do, or Kong Dao, or Ching Dao. Yeah, Chiang Tao, yeah. Whatever he's called today, he's in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. James Nam is in it somewhere. Couldn't quite spot him. Right. And uh, who else is in there? Oh, yeah, Peter Chen is in there as well. Right. Um, and... Whoever's job it is to press the button that does the wow 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 sound effect <laughs> had a very had a very sore finger after this. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. So, so yeah. Um, also, we should mention um, choreographed action mm. direction by Jason Piao, Pai Piao and Bolo himself. Although I actually question that. Yes, and also um, um, apparently they were in they were production managers, whatever mm. that means in this context as well. But um, yeah, it's an odd team, isn't it? Well, I think it's. I, I mean, I need to. I actually before we even get before we even get to what happens in this film, I need to talk about how I feel about this film. Okay, all but, right. Let's do it that way around. Because no, I, ha I have to. Well, it doesn't so matter, I... no, because the plot no. is, is, is written. I mean, they had to tear the matchbox in half. So yeah. it, it didn't look as if the script was too pathetic. Right? Yeah, but at the same time, it's incredibly fucking confusing. Yeah, I think that's yeah. more because it's badly put together. Though, than... Yeah, that's true. Although, yeah. although not as well, fucked up as writing Kung Fu, but we'll, we'll get to that. That could be something to do with the edit we watched. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... Right, okay, so I like a lot of things about this film, right? I like the team up. I think it's a great dynamic they've got going on there. I like the fact that Bolo's taking the piss out of himself. Somewhat. Mm. I like I like the cast of characters that's been assembled. You've got, you know, like all the cross-eyed people. Um, but all the talent in there, it zips along at a really good pace. There's the you, you're continually doing double takes. What the fuck was that? What? What? Um, however, overall, no, I can't. I still can't decide. I'm I'm literally fifty fifty mm. at the end of watching the film and having sat down and thought about it. I am fifty percent absolutely frustrated with this annoying bit of fucking cinema, right? And also highly amused and entertained. Well, it's interesting that you should say that as well, because I disliked this film intensely the first time I saw it. And this second time, I have to admit, it went down a bit easier. But I'm wondering if that's just because I came in with such low expectations. Because I was writing Kung Fu, I was keen to see. But this, yeah. I was <laughs> grumbling under my breath. Yeah. From the moment that um, that 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 Chris kindly requested it. Um, yeah. So that might so, have. Ch I was expecting to have to swallow turds, and instead I got. I don't know. Turds but. mixed with 
Yeah, yeah. I only have to smell Bolo's farts rather than eat his turds. What a beautiful yeah. metaphor. <laughs> we should write Hallmark cards. Oh, right. we should. We should. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, generally, I think my, my the overriding feeling is I'm quite frustrated with this film. I'm a bit annoyed with it mm. because it had so much talent in it. Um, it had such potential and, it, and yet it didn't at all get anywhere near what it could have been. However, however, mm. the, uh, my, the other side of me is really, really happy that I watched it mm. because it's so fucking weird and bizarre and right. strange. It's got it's got a really really weird rhythm to it. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. I I think this time as well, I was slightly more attuned to. I think the first time. I mean, it's not very f- actually funny at all. But I think this time I was slightly more attuned to that it was trying to be funny than... So, so for instance, I was reading back my review from when I first watched it, and a lot of the incongruous stuff, for instance, about releasing two prisoners to go and become sheriff of a small town, my yeah. response was more, what, what the fuck? You know, this makes no sense. Whereas this time I kind of realised, oh, I see, that's, that's kind of a gag. And yeah, yeah. a lawless town, and it's like a bit of scapegoating, right? And yeah, uh, so that's the basic setup: is is a uh, Bolo and Jason Pipe are, are, are convicts together, and there's some kind of lawless town nearby where the sheriffs keep getting. Ca- it's a bit blazing saddlesy, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So they, the 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 warden says, "Oh, choose me two prisoners." that we can send to be the next sheriffs of this small town. More meat for the grind, I suppose. And Bolo and Jason Piaupo get chosen. And then I guess, because the other thing that confused me the first time around was, why is everyone trying to kill Bolo? Um, like all the characters trying to kill Bolo, right? But not, and I think what might be lost in translation in the dub or something is, obviously Jason Piaupo has, is a ro- is a roguish type compared to Bolo's idiot type, and I yeah, think, he's like a lummox, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and somehow Jason Piaus ingratiated himself with with the locals, and I, I guess maybe in the original language, I'm guessing is he he's maybe downplaying that he's one of the new sheriffs, right? Yeah, and that so Bolo is the consistent target. Of various yeah. characters and off him, and Jason Pelko is kind of it's a frenemy thing. Is aiding him, but also kind of doesn't want to be the target. Does, does that make sense to you? Does that? Yeah, that's that's totally that? that's totally what I got from it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Is, is that Bolo? The reason that Bolo is the target of all of these attacks and all these tricks and all these kind of dupes that people are the total strangers. All the all the sort of um, townsfolk are playing on him, including his best mate Jason Pipeo. Mm. Um, is that he is pretty much seen as the sheriff. Although they're both apparently sheriff, he has got like the, the mantle of sheriff. Um, yeah. And that means that he's the one that all the gangsters and all the shady people need to take down. Right. So everyone's basically trying to take Bolo down. And we mentioned that clearly the, the influence here is the, the Bud Spencer and Terence Hill team maps. But the, the one, yeah. I mean, I haven't seen all those films, but from what I remember, I, th- I think in the Terence Hill and Bud Spencer films, even though they are slightly at odds, and I, I get the feeling in those films, they're slightly more friendly. There's a bit more of a aspect of Jason Perpio taking advantage of Bolo that wasn't an element of the Terence Hill Bud Spencer films, right? Like, yeah, I don't remember Bud Spencer. Bud Spencer was big, a kind of a big lumbering ox, but he wasn't an idiot in the way that Bolo is in this film, right? Well, yeah, but also, that. also Bolo's kind of not kind. He is and he isn't an idiot. So Bolo is kind of slow moving, slow thinking, but also kind of an immovable object. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's yeah. kind of so he just goes about it. So he doesn't have to think. 
because he's got such, you know, he's got such prowess and such bulk that nothing affects him anyway. He's basically kind of right. indestructible, you know. Yeah. I suppose he's and, uh, naive more than he is stupid, I guess, and and uh, yeah. thinks thinks the best of people, maybe. Yeah, um, and also all he really cares about is having enough food to eat <laughs> yes. and yes. possibly some boobies to grow through the wall. Right. Yes, he eats yeah. a lot of rice in this. Film. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's so there's lots of lots of sort of comedy twists and turns, lots of sort of heist business and lots of assassination business. Mm. What what what? And, and none of it, not much of it's worth talking about really, other than just just little oh. vignettes that we can pick out. Yeah, you know? it's, a, it's a series of digressions as opposed yeah. to a proper plot, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's 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 quite a nice little. I mean. There's a nice little um, kind of I like I quite actually quite like the bit with um, uh, Bolo is kind of, I think he's woken up he's woken up by um, a baby crying outside and then the woman the mother says oh can you hold my baby and mm. then as soon as he holds the she he holds the baby she stabs him in the gut right. and then. He goes back. He goes to the doctors, and the doctors in on it as well. And he, she like bandages him to the, to the stretcher, mm. and then tries to kill him as well. And you know he gets out of it and all that, which, which wouldn't have been out of place and actually would have been quite effective, um, in a straight kung fu film. Right. Um, but yeah, there's so there's lots of stuff like that. There's lots of people trying to get Bolo, you know. And then there's this whole, you know, there's the stuff with, you know, where. Jason Pai Piao is being groped through the wall, through the dividing wall of the, mm. um, you know, where he's staying and where the mayor's wife, you know, the mayor and his wife are staying. And, you know, there's mistaken identity. So the wife gropes Jason Pai Piao through the wall and then Bolo gropes the mayor through the wall and then he pulls the wall down mm. on top of himself when he realises he's got a dick in his hand. And, you know, it's all that sort of business. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's, there's quite a few fights interspersed you know yeah. there's a fair bit of fighting in it unfortunately i would say at least 50 percent of the fights are shit yeah it's not really a like you said if there's any appeal to this film at all it's more car crash cinema than it is um mm. i i mean if you're interested in seeing this film at all it's from that element rather than, than as a kung fu showcase i think well, I see. That this is the thing, and this is this is this is this appeared throughout my notes. Right? Is this this film would have been a hell of a lot better if it had consistently good kung fu, right? Consistently right. good kung fu choreography, because you can just kind of you can just sit and wait for the good kung fu, right? In right. between all the lame comedy and all those kind of bits you don't understand. Um, but it the the, the kung fu choreography was so hit to miss. Yeah, you know, because yeah. because throughout the first pretty much the first half of the film, it's terrible. It's well, you know, it's yeah. just off. It's it's the rhythms off with it. The, it's just not. It's just not well done at all. Well, well, also I think until the final kind of showdown where it still doesn't improve massively, but it's a bit more of a. It's about the. It's a proper full set piece. I suppose yeah. throughout the film, it, it's it's there in the same way as as the brawling scenes in the Terence Hill but Spencer films are. So they're not really designed to be fighting, you know, they're just supposed to be like a bit of brawling business at the end of the scene or, you know. Well, not not in this film though, because they, they, they you know, they've been quite intricately designed, haven't they? You know, you know you've got Bono yeah, fighting thought. with... So you know they've been designed the same way as Jackie Chan, you know, in, in or probably with an eye to. I get, Jackie but Chan, what I mean is, you know? for instance, in that scene where the doctor, you know, and and yes, mm. but I think the the gag there is more, you know, that he's been tied to the table with the bandages and therefore has to fight with the table attached to him. Like, you can imagine that set piece playing out in uh, Terence Hilliard Spencer Western, but. You know, it's fisty yeah. rather than no, no, no. Yeah, for sure, no. But but also before that and after that, mm. you know, there are there are kung fu set pieces. You know, for example, Jason uh, earlier earlier in that part, you know, Jason Pai Piao is fighting Bolo with a walking stick, 
and that's a kung fu set piece. Oh, that's, that's 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 true. Yeah, yeah. And then Bongo's fighting people with a bench, you know, with one of those yeah. little benches, and so there's a lot of kung fu in it. I suppose to your point, um, it obviously hasn't really stood out and imprinted on my memory. I'm just remembering. Yeah. Series of brawls. Yeah, yeah. Rather. But there are there are there is a lot of kung fu in it, and a lot of it is done quite poorly. Right. But. Right. But it does. It the, the 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 kung fu choreography does get a hell of a lot better towards the end of the film. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, so nowhere, the, the, the last two fights are actually really good. Yeah, nowhere nowhere quite to the level of of writing kung fu, and and also I think it's yeah to your point, it's a little bit too late at that point as well, isn't it? It's like yeah, yeah, the, the moment's gone. You know, no, you've yeah. you've become accustomed to what it is. This kind of knockabout fast yeah. thing and then it's almost like oh oh shit oh yeah it's a kung fu film i forgot you know yeah. Yeah, and yeah, by, yeah. The time, by the time you settle into it it's finished so yeah it's an yeah. odd it's an odd it's an odd day. it's a weird one i'm i'm really happy i saw it right yeah, because so it's, odd, I think. it's yeah because it's so weird mm. it's so strange like the blind the blind uh, uh cart driver Oh yeah. Thing. Yeah. So at the start they get a lift off a blind cart driver who's been sent to fetch them who pops up right at the end. Right. And then you've got the then you've got Bolo's girlfriend who's oh, the, the about tall, eight foot skinny tall woman, yeah. Tall skinny woman and you've got like a montage in the middle of Bolo imagining meeting his love who's the 8 foot tall skinny lady. Yes. To the tune of Johnny Mathis when the child is born. Right. Yeah. And, and so, um, you get to see Bolo run in slow mo. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, and that, that's loads of fun. You know, I don't think that was the intention, but that that is kind of unintentionally hilarious. And I really enjoyed those little bits. And I, enjoy, I really enjoyed the weirdness. Like, for example, the. Um, so the final fight with the um, with the um, Japanese karate master. Ah, with a colander on his head. Who's got a, a wok on his head. Which Who is a oh, that's actually a... Japanese sort of headgear, I suppose. Like well, that's, like yeah, so you, yeah. you watch it, he turns up and there's no fuck, there's no context, right? right? There's no context as to why he might be wearing, unless there's some pun in Chinese language we're not getting. Mm. He's just wearing a pan on his head with no context. So he turns up and, been, like Yeah. So it turns up and you think, oh fucking hell, the prop department fucked up. <laughs> right? And they didn't have any hats. So now they he's put they put a wok on his head and so long as no one mentions it, it'd be all right. Right. But no, actually it is a wok. You know, because at one point he gets a tin opener out and opens up the wok yeah. with a tin opener and so you can see, you know, I mean I I, I like the ambition. Right, I like the ambition for complete zaniness and silliness, and you know it is quite fun seeing. You know, in the the preceding fight, it's quite fun seeing Bolo in an in his underwear um, having oh, I a fight. Know, I don't know if that's the word for seeing Bolo in his underwear. Fun. No, yeah, but I'm finished yet. What well, the bit I liked was when he gets knocked over, and the bloke with the roses on him for some reason, he's got two roses stuck to him. Take the roses off him and plant them in his bum. In his bum hole. <laughs> right. And then Bolo goes, Woo! Yeah. That's quite funny. So there's lots of stuff like that. There's just lots of lots, like zany kind of comedy touches like that. And, but, uh, kind of... and also we mentioned Tex Avery earlier. There's a bit where he's on a boat and there's a leak on a boat and he puts his foot down yeah. and then the leak comes out his ear. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's really kind of, you know, it's meant to be kind of really zany, not not very Kind of, you know, it's it's got it's not in touch with reality. It's meant to be, you know, surreal. Right. I, I'm wondering um, if the because the other thing this. Hang on, I'm trying to think. Am I dates? Well, maybe predate even or um, yeah, maybe predate or at least certainly contemporary. What it also reminded me of, um, not just the Terence Hill but Spencer stuff, and this could be that both of these things are drawing on that influence. But the other thing it reminded me a little bit of are the films of Dean Sheck and Carl Macca when they tried to do yeah. that kind of knockabout cartoonish... Yeah, you know, it's, it's exactly cartoon. that. 
Yeah. It's exactly that. But yeah, not absolutely. not as accomplished, which if you ever watch those films, um, mm. you know that's saying quite a lot, right? That Because those oh, yeah. are, I, I'm, what I like about those films is that they're, their ambition, like you said, more than necessarily the end result. Yeah. The fact that they're actually trying to do live action cartoons is, and yeah. I suppose that is what is trying to do here as well, right? And I'm yeah, guessing, this is exactly what this is trying yeah. to do. Yeah. And I'm guessing they're all they're all drawing on that Terence Hill yeah. Spencer template. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I, d- I just don't think it. It doesn't really work for me. But I still recommend you would watch it. I right. would still recommend it to someone to watch, just because of how how many bizarre things happen during the film. Right, right. And it is a bit of hard work. And it's yes. uh, you know I think it would be a lot less hard work had we had we not had a really poor dub of the film. So that's probably we prob although it probably is a lot of pun based humour, I think we might have got a bit more understanding, a little bit more context had we actually understood the language or you know yeah, a, a better understanding. But then again, I'm wondering if this kind of viewing experience might benefit a little bit from the sound of it as well, though, right? The, mm. the silly voices. I, I'm sure that would have been yeah. the original. Version, languages versions are, but you might just be able to um kind of link um um connect with it a bit more if you're not reading subtitles maybe i don't know yeah no i think yeah you you, you could be right there because yeah actually the the silly whiny voice on the, on the three stroke four cross-eyed characters is mm. probably helping us a bit more than having to yeah to watch on the on, on the subtitles but yeah, so it's 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 a really funny one because I don't really like it. No, it's... I didn't really enjoy watching it, but I uh, recommend it. A kind of yeah, if you're demented and you're not yeah. a good kung fu film, and if you just like finding cinematic oddities, that yes, you might. If you're like us, if you like, if you if you're the type of person who runs around with a dog turd on the end of a stick, going yeah. <laughs> Then you might enjoy it, and and if you think Tosu Ming walking around going, "I'm from America," is funny, <laughs> then uh, well, that's everyone, surely. This is the well. That's the thing, Darren. I think that's what that's what's cracked about us is we think, <laughs> but most people would just look at us and sigh or shake their yeah. heads and discuss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the uh, way, well done. Anyone who's been taking a drink every time I've said Terence Hill and Bert Spencer, uh, <laughs> you're now pissed. Yeah, you need no need to call an ambulance. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes.
And well, so, as strange as Follow the Brute is, I think yeah. actually writing Kung Fu is actually even fucking weirder. But it's because yeah. it doesn't have the comedy element to it, because it's more of a serious film. It might not necessarily um, automatically kind of uh, present itself as, as goofy as Follow the Brute. But actually, this is even more all over the fucking place, isn't it? This film. This is. Yeah, it's it's uh, again, it, it it's as weird, and the, and Bond of the Brute was really fucking weird, mm. as weird, but in an in, in a such a different way. Yeah, but I loved it. I got I, on with this more. This is this is I can, by the time I got to the end, I kind of understood uh, the fan favorite element of this, but it took until getting to the end. Like, if I'd have shut it off halfway through, then I'd have a very different opinion of this film, I think. Yeah. Uh, it took a while. And it's still, it's still, um, it's still a hot mess of a film. But, um, at least in the international edit. But it is, yeah. um, it is definitely one you would more wholeheartedly recommend for a foo, a foo fan. Yeah, it's got it's got the foo and it's got the weird. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the, so it's it's got twice as much as Bob of the Brute has got. But if you think a, about it that way. But it's a bit more of a hard to swallow weird because it's not like Bob of the Brute's got that got the wow 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 weird right. Yeah, Where there's no this, fucking laughs in this. No, this is what the hell is this? This is now? this is like this is this is the only nihilistic kung fu film <laughs> I have ever seen. <laughs> this well, is like it's also it's a mixture of, of and again it's a bit unfair to maybe judge it by the dub and this edit but it's also for me there's an element of someone aiming for profundity but without actually having anything profound to say about it as yeah well. see right okay before we get to that before we get right. to that let's let's get on to what goes on in the film right you mean uh, so, hot dog kung fu? Hot dog kung fu, of course. <laughs> right, okay. So, first caveat, right? First caveat. We yeah. watched the hour 17 minute version of this film. Yes. Apparently, I think it's an 89 minute version. Well, well, let's talk about that a little bit then. So, yeah. Yeah, so we saw the version that's on YouTube as part of the Wutan collection. And um, one thing to its benefit, it is widescreen. Yeah, it's a nice, nice looking print, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, yeah. And while I was looking this up, so there's a website which is now defunct as a resource for buying from. Uh, it's called rarekungfumovies.com. And, but it's still quite a useful resource now and again because there was this guy who sold, basically sold bootleg kung fu film. Yeah, it's, it's the only place you can get a sensible review of the film, isn't it? Well, I don't know if he has much in terms of reviews, unless I'm going yeah. to the wrong part of the site. But but yeah. but what he does have is he lists um, he lists uh, his source for his bootleg, right? So it has like which generation it is and length and whether it's in white. Oh, I'm 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 getting I'm confused. I'm I'm on a, I was on a different site. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. no. Oddly enough, this site is quite. A, I couldn't send you the link because so when you go to rarekungfumovies.com. When you move inside the site, the URL never changes. It's mm. strange. I don't know quite how they've set this up. So I couldn't send you the URL to the specific page. So I thought I would yeah, mention yeah. it here and you can look it up. But mm. but what I like about it, it's a good place to... I often go... When, when I'm watching a Kung Fu film and it seems like it might be inordinately short, I'll go there and check. And, and it's usually quite uh, accurate. So on his website... There's he had a version which was English dubbed, which was full screen, um, 86 minutes. Mm. And the screenshot he has is from, I think, the Vengeance video, yeah, release. Um, which, yeah, because the, um, the Vengeance video seems to be 80 something minutes long, yes. Now, yeah, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure if that's the length of the. So I don't know if there's trailers included or, but I I think he's usually pretty good at yeah. having the actual well, length of the film, not including trailers. So I believe yeah. there is a longer version, but we weren't. There has to, to be. 
No, there has to be a longer version because there are there are scenes in the film, a number of scenes in the film, where there's a confrontation between two antagonists mm. and then no fight, and then it just cuts to the next scene. In the um, in the chapter in the Bay Logan book as well, I th mm. think he's referring to the same version we watched. Okay, as yeah. well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. so I don't know if that because. Uh, the other thing, again, we should probably ask Toby this, and, and, and so I also am under the impression that some of those films that were set for Vengeance video release, yeah, did some of them not actually see the light of day? Am I imagining that? Like, I get the feeling that there was a few set up for release, but they never actually got out there like, towards the end of the days of the label. Like, they oh, I'm not sure, yeah. So I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if that, if that. <clears throat> If people actually have that version of writing kung fu, or well, it's it's on I, I've, it's on Amazon and eBay because I tried to buy it earlier on today. Is that the eighty-six minute version? Yeah. All oh, right. The vengeance, oh. the vengeance video. So it it looks oh, okay. unless someone's doing a con job, it looks like it was out. Oh, okay, but you weren't able to confirm. No, well, I I would to be honest, I would have bought a copy, but it, it's kind of thirty quid, and I'm kind of deliberating. Oh, is it? Yeah. Really, for, for to purchase or to stream? The purchase. All oh, right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't stream it because I wouldn't know it's the right one, you know. Oh, okay. Because they could be missed missed ah. the But it seems to me the vengeance video is the one to to go and grab. But we basically need to talk to someone, hmm. Chris, if you're listening, um, who's got the vengeance video release to confirm. Right. Right. Yes. So, Please uh, let us know. Um, Yes, because uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see, even though, even if it's full screen, it would. Now that we've seen it in white, so we know what it looks like. It would be nice yeah. to see what's uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so so that that's that's a caveat we need to put put in this, but yeah, I mean, as far I mean, so first of all, um, hang on, sorry, I'm going to switch to my phone. Apologies. Hmm. So this is seventy nine. This one, right? Sem yeah, seventy nine. And also uh, seems to be, according to the Bay Logan book, um, so while watching this, I was thinking, is this set somewhere else? Um, either Thailand or Vietnam or, and Vietnam is mentioned, so there's a bit of confusion as to the geography of this. Film, but but mm. according to the Bay Logan book, this was, if not a Hong Kong Thai co-production, it was certainly shot in Thailand. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because well, in the dub anyway, Right. It's set in China. Is well, well, you say that, right? But so yeah. the opening, so all right, so the there's an opening scene where, yeah. which is actually not really necessary at all, where they talk about the salt and tea war, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. And they talk about, um, yeah, these escort robberies by bandits, and this <clears> happens <throat> in Red Clay Village. Which yeah. is which is on the border between north and south, right? They say. Right. Yeah. But later on in the film, there's a flashback to Bolo killing people in Red Clay Village. Yeah. And no, Red Clay Village is in Vietnam, which is apparently where he came from, which oh. people are referred to as up north, because uh, or at least someone says, "Are you from north?" No, yeah, but that doesn't. That doesn't make any sense because because no it doesn't John, no because John Chung goes to the village for the confrontation at the end yeah but I'm just so he wouldn't really, travel all the way to Thailand not know when he'd be there of of Vietnam sorry Vietnam yeah. I'm just telling you what the film said then and to be yeah. honest they do say north and south but I'm wondering did we fill in the blanks did Maybe they we did, did yeah they mention China I don't know yeah I mean it's it's in that detail is kind of incidental anyway really. I mean, yes. what 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 there is to speak about in this film, and, and the plot is simplistic. Um, well, you know, Darren, you've got to... sorry to interrupt you, but uh, just to add. Um, so the one thing I wanted to say about that intro, the Salt and Tea. Oh yeah. According to Bay Logan, uh, that's actually from another film. Anyway, they that's apparently from, that's from an earlier Bolo film that they cut into the film because they thought it needed a more exciting opening. Okay. I'm assuming they read up it, so it's a, it says something different to what it said in the original film. But yeah, that's yeah. not part, that's from another so film. The, 
What's that? So that the opening fight, the opening ambush. Yeah, that the escort and the whole solid yeah, yeah. key war thing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's from another film. Perhaps. Oh, well, they, they, to be fair, they did it quite well. Yeah, I would. I didn't notice. notice. No, 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 because no. uh, I haven't read the Day Logan article. So right. Yeah. So I, you know that. that... Um, yeah, like well, yeah. I couldn't send you a link because it's in the it's in the book, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So 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 yes. That's another reason why it doesn't really make uh, any sense. No, no. So yeah. Anyway, so 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 Bolo is 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 basically a horrible bandit, also paedophile, which you don't get a lot of. Ah, is it? Is he? Yeah, he's a paedophile. Ah, that's interesting. How? I mean, I know there's a, I know there's a quite a jarring scene where a young girl ends up in a ditch or an open grave or something, but. What, are there, is there some dialogue that I missed, or is there something alluding? So, there? yeah, there's two occasions where. So the first occasion is subtle. So okay. he, it's when he kills everyone in the um, red clay village. Is this in the flashback? That's it. So it's the flashback of the the fortune teller and his assistant and his mate. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And in the flashback. Uh, no, sorry, that's no, that's the second bit. So the right start when there's um, there's a massacre, he basically kills everyone. Some people run off, apart from a little girl. Okay. And then he turns to the little girl, and then you cut away to somewhere else. Ah, uh, yes, I do vaguely. That's a little bit ambiguous. I suppose so. Yeah. And then it's a lot more overt in the flashback later on, uh, where you've got the the fortune telling pair given their flashback yeah and one minute there's a girl there and the next minute there's a girl with no clothes on dead yes in a ditch so that's so that's clear <laughs> i i guess i mean i have to admit i didn't necessarily think that he, i mean i thought it was amplified that he was a bad do I, I didn't necessarily think that he'd fuck the little girl but i suppose yeah maybe i think yeah i, I mean i think that's what that's, I think that's the filmmaker's intention for us to think. I think that's what they're aiming for. And then when he's got the gold chain and the cigar and he's going, ah, that's another <laughs> giveaway. Now then, now then. <laughs> yeah, in the big chair. Bolo will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> now then, a little Nancy's yeah. written in and she wants <laughs> to know what the salt and tea war was like. <laughs> so we're going back to ancient China. <laughs> Yeah, so, so anyway, so yeah, Bolo, Bolo is introduced as this pretty fucking horrible character, hardly ever speaks, um, just comes in, takes over the town, takes over the town industry, and it's a bit unclear whether they're gangsters or just traders, this kind of yeah, salt I don't know. gang, by the way, takes over the whole town. Um, is in charge, hardly ever speaks. You hardly even see him in the film, to be honest. He's not in it a lot. No, no. Um, but I, actually, I think it still works. Um, um, and um, the, the, the main sort of source of antagonism um, is um, John Chung, who plays the local teacher. He hasn't even got a name. He's just called Teacher, as far as the yeah. dub goes, anyway. So he's an odd... Um, so... So yeah, John Chang, who was in um, Snake in the Monkey's Shadow, right, the previous. I'm movie. fucking great in that. Yeah, as well. a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, actually, there's a lot. We'll get to this. There's a lot of people in this film who have been in a whole bunch of things, primarily extras, underlings, yeah. mm. and have a bit of a showcase in this film where you think, oh fuck, why have I not? really noticed this person before yeah i mean as far as action goes this film's a fucking revelation yeah yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in here um yeah uh, um um cred the choreograph choreography credited to um san sin who we'll get to who is he, he's the blind one i think isn't he of the two i think so yeah uh and, and yeah. johnny chung wa who is john chung's younger brother who yeah plays one of the um, goons to the... So after Bolo, the other main villain is actually an unidentified guy. Um, the, the Yeah, with the moustache. 
Yeah, it's a shame because he's got quite a good villain's face. I was like, oh, he's got a really distinctive face, yeah. isn't he? I was like, yeah. oh, who's this now then? But he's yeah. not listed on the Hong Kong. So I'm guessing he must have been a a local Thai actor. Yeah. Um, who we don't know who it is. Um, yeah, yeah. But where, where, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So John, John Chang as a teacher whose character is fucking annoying in this film because he's <laughs> he's he's a very ineffectual school teacher and a calligraphy master or something or a hobbyist yeah, yeah. or something. And he also seems to have a calligraphy stall. I I actually initially when you first see him when he's being bullied by the rich guy and his goons, he has a little calligraphy stall. So I thought his main job was commercial calligrapher mm. uh, and a teacher on the side. It turns out he's mainly a teacher, but all his students make fun of him. Yeah. Um, and and he's, I mean, t- I mean, it says a lot for the strength of how much the choreography does the heavy lifting of this film. Our hero is so ineffectual and annoying, and just flips back and forth from <laughs> like, to suddenly I shall, and then he's drunk, and he's just. If he was your mate, he'd he'd be like the annoying. <laughs> Dramatic friend, all his phone during <laughs> the night, going, "Oh, my life is worthless." Or you know, he, he is he is quite dramatic. Yes, you're right. So, however, I completely disagree with you. Okay, because I really liked that character. Did you? <laughs> I really did. No, I really really did. And it and this is where I'm coming from with the nihilism. Right. Right. Which I do, is which is a word I understand. I do not use lightly. Right. Right. So so. John Chung's character is there, seemingly, to be punished until he is killed in this film. Yeah, that's true. He is a bit of a job-like character, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he starts off. He starts off failing as a teacher. He loses his students, right? Because because of the reasons you said. Because he's kind of ineffectual. Yeah. Um, but also because. Uh, the way I got it was that this is a ruined town. This is a town that's been destroyed by kind of, you know, the, the, the degradation of, you know, being kind of a gangland town. Right. And all the kids want to go learn Kung Fu with the gangsters instead yeah. of learning how to write, read and write. And so he he then makes friends with people. So he makes friends with the mother of one of the kids who gets killed. Hmm. He then acquires a load of money, which he then loses and gets stolen. Mm. He then makes friends with the beggar and the fortune tellers mm. who get killed. He then makes friends with the um, the the salt trader's daughter, ish. Candice Yu. Yeah, Candice Yu, uh, who gets killed pretty fucking brutally upside down naked yeah at the end um he then has to work out how to do kung fu which is a little bit of a fudge because it's not really a training scene in there. yeah we'll get to the good calligraphy. montage though yeah we'll get to the calligraphy fu conceit as well because that's another thing yeah yeah i on the one hand find interesting but also find very problematic yeah we'll get we'll get there we'll get yeah. there and then at the end, you know, there's good spoilers if you haven't guessed. At the end, he does triumph, yeah. but only at the cost of his own life. Yeah, I and mean, he it's, dies. Not, it's not explicitly, but yes, I read it the same way. I At the end, when all the children turn up and they count out to him and say, teacher, teacher. Yeah, that's uh, kind of vindication. Wrong. and yeah. yeah, he's dead, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's too late. So, And I admire yeah. what you've done there, darling, because what you've done there is you've you've given this film the benefit of the doubt i think and and your everything you've said is right like when you put it that way there's something to be said for the fact that the character is all over the place and it's not so much the messiness of the film it's more that that the film's really gone out of its way to tell a desperate nihilistic story and yeah. In its full version, if there is such a thing, then mm. maybe that makes more sense. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy to go 
along with you there um, that this might that was the original intention, right? And we'll give it the benefit. Well, it, it may it may prove me wrong as well because th this this narrative of mine that I've got in my head may only work with fewer fights in the film. Yes, or maybe the because... missing ten minutes is a bloke running around with a colander on his head. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, it's I I I really found it, regardless of what we think about how effectual or ineffectual that character is. Hmm. It's a fucking downbeat film. Yes, and and even though I said that as a joke, yeah, yeah. that's not actually that unbelievable. That there is actually a longer version of this film with comic relief. There could well be that they did yeah. actually take out wisely from the yeah. national edit. What? Uh, what? Yeah, but what, what we probably do know they took out was a bunch of fights. So that would seem to make sense, yeah. Although, yeah. also, not, I mean, why would you do? I understand when they remove comic relief because it doesn't, that stuff doesn't necessarily travel well, mm. but fights are fights, right? So, and sen I mean, the only thing I can imagine is if they were really violent or had nudity, but yeah, there's other nudity in the film, so I don't know, yeah. And 77 minutes is such an odd length, like, um. You wouldn't trim it to 77 minutes. Yeah, if, if it was cut down to 90 or something like that, or, or even... It, but 77 minutes is such an odd length, isn't it? It's yeah. like, if it was for, or maybe for TV. You might trim it for TV. Yeah, but minutes. I don't think it was yeah. TV. I think it was... Um, yeah. For export. It's theatrical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, odd. it's odd. Yeah. If anyone knows, uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we want to hear from you on this one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I fucking loved it. Right, I, I loved it. I, I, I very nearly spent thirty quid, which is three to four times the value of that DVD, mm. on getting a copy of the Vengeance one, just so I could see the full version today. I didn't. Right. But I'm, I'm, I am now deeply into this film. Right. So, so we were going to. So yes. Yeah, so we've mentioned a few times the the blind beggar is played by Sansin, who is one of the choreographers. Yeah. And 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 the other one. Um, Kong Kwok Kung or Chang Cheng yeah. again was someone who wasn't really on my radar because you know usually plays extra but um, these two are really impressive there's scenes of them just kind of yeah practicing shapes uh, yeah. Yeah, one another, which is just wow what the hell is this now this is that shows um yeah, great promise. Those, those, you know, they're not even fighting anyone. They're just demonstrating. Yeah. It's just the ships, yeah. And it's great. Those it's fucking fantastic. Yeah. It, I mean, again, you know, we are, we are, we. This is the top of the top of the tree in terms of fight choreography. Mm. This is we're, we're at the top again mm. with this. Um, and and yeah, I notice actually that. Um, my notes are a bit unclear, but I think it was Sun Sin. Um, did loads of work with um, Lu Chia Lang. Okay. So did lo loads of extra work, loads of kind of stunt team work, not, you know, not a choreographer, but stunt team work with Lu Chia Lang. Um, and Johnny Chang, what's his name? Johnny Chang Wah. Other? Chang Wah, that's him. Um, so he did, he was in, he was with, he's in Wilson Tong's ah, stunt okay. team. Right. So he was kind of an assistant choreographer to, to Wilson Tong. I may have those two run the wrong way. Right. Um, so good there's some really interesting, either way, right? good amazing pedigree. Yeah. pedigree. And also, um, it looks like, I think it was Sun Sin, um, also choreographed Descendants of Wing Chun. Yes, yes, I noticed that, yes. Which, which is, which is, should probably be on our list for a Fong Hak on double. Uh -huh. Very near future. Well, the other one as well to add to the list of people, well, actually, Candice Yu even gets to to, mm. to do some stuff as well. But, but the other one is, um, so there's a beggar character who suddenly comes to life, played by Gary Siu, right? The guy, not yeah. the beggar, the guy in the doorway. Mm -hmm. Who's mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, passed out or whatever, so the whole, and suddenly he comes to life and does some stuff and you're like, oh, Who's this guy now? And then you look him up and you're like, oh, okay, again, only played extra role, yeah. whatever. But 
clearly an untapped, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like these people; these people don't exist until this film. Yes, and 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 Bolo. I mean, this is the one. This is the third leg of the tripod. I think if you if his main showcases are Into the Dragon and Bloodsport, this mm. is the other one, right? This is um, absolutely. Yeah, him this, I mean, this is this is Carter. What? Sorry, this is this is Bolo Young's hmm. Born Invincible, isn't it? Yes, yes, good. Yes, yes, good analogy. And and he plays his flute uh, backwards, um, yeah. which has a blade in it as well. And he does his famous yeah. you know, fighting without looking thing. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it's all all that stuff's great. And 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 um, yeah, the final him versus John Chung is a that's a delight Brilliant. to watch. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's it, every fight in this film is faultless. Hmm. There's yeah. nothing wrong with any fight in this film. I don't think there are enough fights in the film. Agreed, or at least not in this version. But and, and again, this is the 77 minute version that we're talking about. But you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of John Chung and a, we, a weird. Okay, so to try and counter your argument before that John Chung's character is just ineffectual. Hmm. is just shit or it's just a bad, badly made film or some elements are badly made or badly scripted yeah so much time is spent on that character yeah there are so many weird skirmishes where he's getting drunk and going up to the going up to the um you know the, the salt traders compound right you know and so much time spent in the cemetery so much time watching you know, so it's and, and and you know the, the the scenes where the scene where, for example, um, the beggar mm. dies. You know, he's showing his forms, he's showing his shapes to John Chen, and there's this really kind of kind of quite. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it kind of got me got me going, got my heartstrings going a bit. Mm. Um, you know, where he kind of dies mid form. You know, right. and kind of says goodbye, and you oh, you have to be virtuous and all that stuff. Um. So there's 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 some good heart there's some good heart to the film. Yeah, and that, I think Bob is doing a really fucking good job of 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 getting you into right the narrative. The other indication that um that there's bits missing as well is there's a few scenes with San Sin and Kong Kwok Kung where you get you get entirely confused and you get the two mixed up because there's there's like yeah. one scene where one character turns up and I'm pretty sure I'm right in thinking that it's it starts with the blind character and then it switches to a fight scene and they're now fighting the non-blind character. Well no, they, no 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 they sent a bit of footage where 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 the other character enters and so No there is there is is there no no yeah that yeah you might have Glazed over, or yeah, I, awesome. I remember that fight, and there, there is, there is a bit where the other one comes in towards the beginning, kind of tag with, with with the salt, with the salt, um, whatever the the rich guy, then the rich guy, the rich guy, the Thai guy, who we don't know who he is. Near the the first time the the blind guy is introduced, he comes yeah. in, and he goes, "Oh, I'm going to read your fortune or whatever," and then yeah, no, no, they tagged him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I right, maybe I didn't yeah. over there. Well, either they tag team or one drags the other off, I think. Um, but yeah, that's, but anyway, it made even, sense to me. Even if it if, if it is my fault and not the film's fault, I I still think you do have to concentrate quite hard because absolutely of the edits. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um so <clears throat> calligraphy fool then. Um, yeah. Now, see, this is the again maybe to the films. Uh, to you know, speaks a lot to the how well the film works is. That it does work despite this conceit not really working. Um, like I, I kind of get the idea, and also I, as someone who doesn't read or write in Chinese idiom, well, not read much in Chinese idiograms, um, I could be missing a very important element. But my suspicions are that this doesn't really work as a thing to hang your film, at least not in this film. I mean... I don't know, I don't know, yeah. I mean, again, just... I to, see where you're I, I get where you're coming from. Just, yeah, just, to, just to give yeah. an example of my ignorance, 
in how that might be undermining my opinion. So there's a scene where the Gary Sue, um, the Gary Sue character dies mm -hmm. and he writes a character on his palm in yeah. flat. And it was a character that I was familiar with in Japanese. Oh, well, tell and me it, what it means, because I don't, still don't know. OK, so, so well, this is the thing. So it's you would pronounce it in Japanese by itself as an. It's the one, it's just, uh, hang on, I'll draw it for you now. <clears throat> it's this one here. It's, uh, it's the one with the roof. Yeah, li listeners, listen to Clive now, drawing, drawing <laughs> something. Oh, yeah, of course, see. this isn't the video. I'm showing for you when you're done. It's this one. It's the one, it's, it's the, it's the, it's yeah, the yeah, yeah, one yeah. and um, house. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that's used in Japanese with an extra e on the end of it in hiragana. It reads yasui, which means uh, cheap or reasonably priced. Okay. So that's how you usually see it. So that's why it comes yeah. to you. But then I was trying to figure out well, what, what if it's not, if you just read the, the kanji on its own without the e, and that means safe or calm. And I think. That's okay. what yeah. when he writes on his palm, what he means is like centered or at peace. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Like so what yeah. I finally figured it out and I was like, ah, but then it still didn't really make too much sense to me other no. than be at one with yourself or you know. So well during that sequence though, that is that is him kind of teaching teaching John Chung to be kind of one step ahead and be kind of loose, you know, because because he kind of almost wins the fight or holds his own against the fight with Bolo because he's kind of floppy and loose and quick and he can right. kind of anticipate the move. So that would kind of lend itself to be kind of centered, yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I don't, I, yeah. I don't feel really necessarily um, uh, qualified to, but my instinct no. tells me that it's it's it, uh, and reading the in the the Bay Logan talking about it, there's a scene there's a training scene where he's kind of framed by a bunch of wine jars right yeah yeah and, and he smashes and you write something on them and he smashes them mm. and apparently that's all according to Bay Logan what he writes on them is just wine <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure if that really gives you any extra okay insight. no um, well yeah but I, I that's that's for me that's not the point you know. I think the po the point is is you know is 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 not what he's writing is the fact that he's using writing to to make a martial art you know so this is it's it's almost like watching I don't know uh, Shaolin Mantis mm. you know where David Chiang discovers how to do Mantis Kung Fu so it's like the creation of a new style of Kung Fu is how I've kind of interpreted that yeah no 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 I I understand that it's just I would yeah. quite like to. Have... I would, you know, when you watch those things, yeah, someone's watching a monkey or a scorpion or something, it's, it's, yeah. it's very clear. Whereas in this, for us at least, it's not I, the connection no. between the particular ideogram and what he's doing, the flow, or it doesn't yeah, yeah. come through. And I'm yeah, not, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really, no, it doesn't really logically, you know, one, no. one you know, the beggar teaching him his style and then the, the, pro, uh, the fortune tellers teaching him their style. That doesn't necessarily synergize into writing kung fu. Exactly, and and I'm wondering yeah. if it's I, I my instinct is that that's more the film's fault than it is my ignorance. Although yeah. overall, it's probably a mixture of the both. But it does seem a little bit like, you know, someone's been smoking. And apparently, there was a lot of Thai strong Thai weed smoking going on in this film, and it does have that slight mm. whiff of, you know, someone going like, dude, like. The character for C is like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. We should... But but how about how about hmm. that 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 towards the end of the film, hmm. the training scene where you finally get sort of a training scene where he's pulling his shapes, he's practicing with his umbrella and his quill hmm. and something else, and he's doing all this footwork that's like writing characters and right. doing all this shit up against a Buddha in a temple. Oh, it looked great. It looks great. looked great. Sounded great. The fucking music was excellent. Yeah. And that's a montage. So that's interspersed with um, Bolo just deciding he's had enough of this salt trading people and just decides to fucking kill everyone. 
Right. So he just right. kills everyone in, in I don't the want to be a, gun. I don't want to be a salt trader. Yeah, exactly. Just kills everyone. But so by the end of the film, there there you know, there are the children and there are John Chung mm. and there are Bolo and they're the only people left in the town. R- right. Right. Yeah, no, no, I see what you're saying, but again, yeah. it, it's 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 um I'm wondering if the and this is good enough. This is good enough, but I'm wondering if the the appeal of the film is skin deep, though. Like, I, I'm not sure if there's much real depth to it, which is fine. It doesn't have to be. It's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, yeah. I get, I get, I get what you're saying. So that the, there is there is a pretension to this film. I think right. is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. I so think there's so. there's there's something there's something kind of el topo. Yeah, it's a spaghetti western it's, at all levels. There's like yeah, so there yeah exactly yeah. So there's there's there's, there's like a bit of Hodorowsky kind of mysticism. Yes, going on. Olexism in in reality. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's no, I get that. I I really fucking like that. I don't and, always like that in in the other genre, but I like it in this right. particular film. Yeah, no, it's because it's. it's it's, it certainly it's didn't different. annoy me. It certainly didn't annoy me. Yeah. I, I I appreciate that it's different, and uh, it's just I think it's kind of worth bringing up, um, seeing as yeah. we are, you know, um, we are breaking down the film. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, no, it wasn't necessarily. I didn't. Find, it didn't. It, like you said, that kind of thing can be irritating, right? But it wasn't necessarily irritating here. It was just a little bit. Um, I don't know it, it got in the way a little bit between you know the 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 pure uh, enjoyment of of the action and there was all this other kind of bollocks in the way but yeah but then again i suppose this being a fan favorite that's part of it isn't it it's, it's the, i th- i think it's the memory of yeah going along to a late night streaming or something maybe being a bit high and yeah, the yeah. mixture of great shapes and yeah what the fuck head scratchiness kind of imprints itself Ooh. on your memory more than something that was maybe um, smooth. We talked about this a little bit before when we talked about uh, the hot, the ghoul and the vicious. And what did we team it up with? Shaolin Invincible Sticks, was it? No. Uh, yes, Shaolin yeah. Invincible Sticks. And, yeah. and what we said about that as well was true. Like in, in retrospect, going back and watching them again, Invincible Sticks was actually much better than hot, the ghoul and the vicious. But Hot the Gold mm. just had that weirdo element. It had, yeah, it had that, legendary status. Yeah, 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 yeah. and and the and the guns, the weirdness, yeah. 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 Simply because, in a way, uh, it didn't go down so well. It sticks in the craw a little bit because it's odd. Yeah, but oddly enough, that makes it more memorable. Years yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I think we're kind of. I don't think there's much more to say. No, on, no, um, no. On, on this one, but something I want to say mm. is this is for me. This is new classic, new instant classic. Right up there, up there, up there with the big boys for me. Okay, this one. I wouldn't go. And as- I want to. I want to. I want to go and. I want to go and find the the um, longer version. Well, if you do find it, let me know, and I'm going to be on the lookout for it as well. It hasn't quite gone up there in classic centers for me, but I have to admit, I mm. do totally get. It's fan favorite status, and I mm. yeah. I get uh, to your point. Um, I would thank Chris less for making me watch Ball of the Brute again. <laughs> thank you for putting this towards the top of the pile because this yeah, definitely yeah. was a, a a missing piece of the puzzle for sure. Yeah, and and also I want to before we wrap up, I want to talk mm. about. I want to I want to posit a theory, right? Right. So, as problematic as all of the brute was mm. right and well there are problems with this this film as mm. well like this is a much more easy film to get get your teeth around and understand right. do we do we think mm. or do we not think mm. that bolo could actually have been If he'd made more films and if he'd actually been allowed to go and go and have a look at other interesting things mm. and do more films, do we actually think he could have been a top tier director? Um, no, 
I mean, he could have got lucky, and because um, that's because that's the other thing. It, well, that, it's it's what it's yeah, it's what this is, isn't it? It's what um, yeah. Well, yeah. I think as well that's the one thing that separates when you're doing film criticism when it comes to kung fu films as well. Mm. I think it's such a different way of, um, for instance, if you if if you're talking about films in 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 other genres, there's like a definite. You know, you you have a strong script and you have uh, good performances and and all that kind of of a piece, right? But the thing yeah. with the nature of a kung fu film is, you can literally have no script at all, right? And, yeah, yeah. And you can have, you know, a blind man with no arms and a limp directing. Apologies yeah. to all blind men with no arms and a limp listening. But if they have performers who are also quick to take up the task of choreographing and getting the day's work done, yeah. you can accidentally end up with a classic. I mean, yeah, the, the no, kind of, I disagree. And no, you can't. You can't accidentally end up with a classic. I, I, you can. There's got to be a vision. There's got to be a vision behind it. Well, no, what I mean is because we are so forgiving as, and, and these two yeah, things prove it as well. Look at Joy Hawk. Look at, look at, look at, Hulk. Hulk. Look at no, Joy Hawk. I'm not saying. I'm not saying there's no. There's no. Yeah, yeah. There's no um, examples of people with a strong body of work, and it's because that person yeah. is like Chan Che, for example. But I'm yeah, just saying yeah. that. We are so forgiving as viewers in terms of if something's just weird and a mess, we mm. take that on board as part of the enjoyable experience of the film. But that doesn't mm. necessarily reflect the skill of the filmmaker. And to both of these yeah, films yeah, kind yeah. of illustrate that to a certain extent. So I, I yeah. so I think uh where was I going with this? Yeah, so I think I mean, yeah, we've only got two. Uh, data points, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not enough to make a judgment. Not really, but my, but I, I would be, I would be more surprised. Let's say someone unearthed a archive <laughs> of Bolo directed films. I would be more surprised if that discovery suddenly catapulted him into the <laughs> arena of the greats than it just turned out to be. Ah, oh, yeah, he just got lucky with yeah, yeah. Yang Fu and. I don't know. Yeah, money on it, you know. there's something. No, I'm. I'm. There's my. I've, my gut is telling me that he might actually have been a decent director. Oh well, you never know. But that's. I, I've got nothing. I've got nothing to, to to back that up with. Although, if you if you view these films as a progression, if you view these films as a as a, as a, a learning curve, hmm. then it's a good learning curve. You know? Yes. But it's, again, two films is not. I agree. Two films is not anywhere near enough to, to to make a judgment. Yeah. No, I'm just quickly looking up here because I it didn't occur to me to do this before. Because the thing is, a lot of Bolo's um, credits are non Hong Kong films as well, right? So I'm actually having a look at the IMDb. Oh, I hadn't thought of doing that either. Um, because I I do seem to remember him being credited with. You know, because because he was in a lot of like American things. My memory is as well, like Shoot Fighter Two and uh, both Shoot Fighter yeah, and, yeah. and and Tiger Claws. And, and I'm just wondering if um, he had input there at all. Like if they were deferential towards him, and and yeah, yeah. he was responsible for some you know good fight scenes because those yeah. and those American things are not really my wheelhouse. I'm not really um yeah well he's in he's in amsterdam connection or rather he's stunt coordinator for amsterdam connection and 10 magnificent killers both of which i haven't seen in 100 years right right but, yeah i mean again i mean yeah the jury's out and we'll never know yeah i don't suppose we really need to know either i mean no um, no, no it's just yeah. for our, a bit of fun isn't it fantasy yeah, yeah. colleagues yeah so. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, but anyway, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Cheers, Chris. Um, cheers yeah, thank you. For, the, for the first part for me, but uh, thank you for writing Kung Fu for sure. Uh, that was definitely. Do you know um, when 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 Chris mentioned doing these two? Did he did he express any? Did he just say he wanted to hear us talk about it, or did he say 
oh, I fucking love this film or anything. No, yeah. no, he just wanted to hear us talk about it. Uh, one thing he did want us to do, which we failed to do, unfortunately, okay. right. um, is he did, there's a song. <laughs> we had one well, job. We had one I know, job. I know, I know, we failed. Yeah, I did already tell him today that we failed <laughs> as well. So he's expecting this news. Um, he did, um, there's a song 25 minutes in to Ball of the Great. Um, uh, that's a Chinese song, sounds Cantonese, I think. Yeah. Um, that he wanted to know the name of and the artist, but um, yeah, I, I didn't get there, so. Oh, okay. I, I it's the yeah. first time I'm hearing this, so I didn't. Okay, yeah. Like, so yeah. maybe we can maybe we can follow up on that. Yeah, you never know. After uh, the, if, yeah, I, if I yeah. find out, I shall. Yeah. Yeah, it should be as simple. If we can work out the Chinese characters, it should actually be as simple as like a Shazam, you know, app or something on. Hmm. On the film at that point, isn't it? But uh, yeah, apologies for not not getting to that, Chris. It's uh, it was it was only today actually I'd, I'd realised that that you'd requested that. So music yeah. wise as well, it's worth mentioning. There's a bit. Um, when is it? There's a scene. I think it might be when the beggar and the blind man are playing. Uh, you know, doing the shapes. Yeah. Right? There's like this uh, quite cool, like sounds like Thai, like accordion music. Was oh it? yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was quite cool. I yeah. would have liked. Well, to I, th I, I found I found the music in general to be really good in this. I mean, it's, it's, it seems to be from a spaghetti western that I can't identify. Some of it might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I thought it was used really effectively, and yeah, it's just yeah, it's a very very rousing montage mm. at the at the end with the the training montage. But anyway, we discussed yeah. that already. Yeah, no, my Achilles so, heel is needle drops as well. I'm not good at identifying that. No. Song. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You picked the wrong people to ask ask about <laughs> songs, Chris. I'm afraid. Yes. But anyway, um, other than that, I hope we uh, I hope we delivered uh, something listenable. I think we probably did. Yeah. Well, and, uh, yeah. And I, I had a blast doing it. I I learned yeah. so much just doing this. Yes. No, I enjoyed. I would it not have that. not have done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, yes, and unless something else gets in the way, our next episode will be a request special as well. Uh, Gino requested some stuff from us. So Thank that, you, Gino. And that also seems like uh, it's going to be a bit of a steep learning curve as well. So, yeah. Yes. Good times ahead. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, until then, then. Yeah. Tra. Turbet, turbet. I'm sure I've read it, but then again, I'm far too kind. Look, make me feel colder. And kindness chimes, my fear of whispering blind. Is it just for? Cheese, biscuits and wine I've seen my way across the room with you So I'll see my way across the Malibu See my way